since this is a oscillation proper question. Uh, it says uh, mass is placed on a frictionless horizontal table. That makes things easier. Um, you don't have to deal with the gravity. You don't have to deal with the damping. A spring, uh, given spring constant, which can be stretched or compressed, is placed on the table. Um, the fact that it can be compressed is nice. <laughs> we don't have that in lab. Uh, six kilogram mass is anchored to the wall. Um, the equilibrium position is marked at zero. So let me start sketching this so that I have a mental image that I can use. Um, so here's my frictionless table. Here's my immovable wall. And here's the um, my compressible spring, which is tied to a mass. Uh, of some mass, M. and I am given the spring constant, okay. All right, um, oh, and let's say this position is the equilibrium position, X is equal to zero. Um, the student moves the mass out to X equals seven centimeters, so Mass gets moved out here, and we would say this is at x is equal to seven centimeters, and releases it from rest. The mass oscillates in simple harmonic motion. Find the position, velocity, and acceleration of the mass at time t equals 3.0 seconds. So this question can be a very easy question. <laughs> if you are familiar with the mathematical representation of a simple harmonic oscillation. It comes down to this particular representation of simple harmonic oscillation that you have seen before. The x is a function of time. It's given by amplitude times one of the two trig functions, cosine of omega t, and to be sure to cover all the possibilities, uh, start out with some phase factor that we are going to figure out at the initial stage of this. So this is the general mathematical expression for simple harmonic oscillator. Each of these parameters can be associated with some physical quantity. This is the amplitude or the maximum displacement from equilibrium. This is the angular frequency. And for a mass on a spring, you actually have a formula for that. The natural frequency of oscillation is the square root of uh, k over m. <laughs> um, I do know it's a square root of uh, uh, ratio of these two things. But I usually think through to try to make sure I put them in the right um, places, either it's m over k or k over m, is what would I need to do to make the oscillation go faster? Uh, stiffer spring, higher k, means higher frequency of oscillation, so square root of k over m. Uh, you should have them memorized. Okay, um, so it's a function of t, so I don't need to fix t. In fact, I will be plugging in t equals three seconds later. So the only thing I need to figure out here is the phase factor here, phi. And to figure out the phase factor, the standard thing to do is simply plug in what uh, the, the initial condition, time equals zero, and try to have phi in such a way that uh, you, the, everything matches up at time equals zero. So um, at time equals zero, this is what you want. Based on the description, at time equals zero, you want the uh, x position to be at 7.0 centimeters, and you want the uh, velocity to be zero centimeter per second. Uh, it releases it from rest, that's what it says. And that this second condition is actually important because this first condition technically doesn't uniquely uh, fix your unknowns. So because at time equals zero, this is uh, what you get. Um, um, it, uh, so 
plug in t equals zero, then from the general expression, I get a times cosine of phi, right? And without this information, that velocity of the mass is at zero, I don't, I would not have known for a fact that this a is equal to the initial position, 7.0 centimeters. But because I know that the velocity is at zero centimeters per second at rest, that the x position it's at is at the amplitude. So that's how I know a is equal to 7.0 centimeters and that phi here should be equal to zero. I mean, it's a you know, simple answer. Sometimes the problem can give you a more complicated scenario, like by telling you uh, both the non-zero position and velocity at time equals zero, then the systematic way you would approach it here is you would have two set of conditions. One is the condition for position and the other is condition for velocity. You simply take the deriv time derivative of the position before you plug in the time equals zero. Don't do that after you do that, then you'll just get zero. You don't want that. So taking the derivative of this thing here, taking the derivative of that, you get um, minus a omega and then the um, sine of omega t plus phi. You plug in t equals zero, then this goes away. So this should be the sine of phi. And then if you had non-zero position and velocity, then you would treat this as basically uh, system of equations again, system of two equations, uh, x and v, in terms of two unknowns, amplitude and phase factor phi. Here, this question is easier um, because it gave you initial condition that where initial velocity is zero. So, so we had uh, this easy fact uh, right out of the gate. Okay, um, then I think I have numerical value for everything. Uh, with all this, then x as a function of time is equal to amplitude, 7.0 centimeters times cosine of, oh, for omega, I guess I need to plug in these numbers, k and m. I, it looks like I'm given both k and m, so I'll just leave them as symbols. You can plug those numbers in. Square root of k over m times time plus uh, oh, wait, phi is zero, so I don't need to write plus phi. Um, so that's it, that's it for position. To answer the, and to answer the first question, you simply plug in t equals three. Um, all the numbers inside this argument here will work out to be unitless numbers, technically in units of radian. Uh, plug in the numbers, you will get x. It might, could be minus, you, have, you will have to work that out. For velocity, you just uh, take the derivative. That's the derivative of position as a function of time. So, um, okay, I guess one factor of omega comes out and I get minus 7.0 centimeters, square root of k over m, sine of omega, square root of k over m times t. And plug in t equals three cent seconds to get the answer that they're looking for. For the acceleration, you just go through this one more step. It's the derivative of velocity. So uh, I guess I keep the minus sign. Minus 7.0 centimeters. I get another factor of square root of k over m. So I get now k over m times cosine of square root of k over m times t. So that's it. Uh, uh, some of the, what could appear difficult oscillation questions, once you learn to use this general expression for oscillatory motion, it becomes very much easier because um, it's kind of easy version of calculus that you have to do here. Um, all right, so I'll leave plugging in the numbers to you and